analyzing game video, the key to rapid improvement as basketball officials. Sometimes officials want feedback on their video and send us clips. Today we have some viewer clips for analysis. Let's get started and look at those clips. Stick around. Greetings and welcome back to Five Play Friday, the show where we look at video. Take what from it what we can, get better as basketball officials. We're looking at all the things. Were the, were the officials in the right position, looking at the right thing, at the right time, working the system of mechanics they are tasked to work, etc.? These are the things we're looking at. I have to give a shout out to our fantastic show supporters without whom the show would not happen. We've got Jeet Gulati, Jose Lansang Jr., Brian Maki, Tyler Matlock, and Thomas Hennion. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? You can always head to a betterofficial.com slash coffee. You know there's going to be a link in the show notes below. All right, today we're going to get started with some clips submitted by a young official. John Miller actually submitted these qu clips quite some time ago. We're just going to look at the plays for what they are, make decisions about things that could be improved, etc. That's what we're looking for when we look at our game video. Where are the areas for improvement? And we're looking for the basics. We're looking for fundamentals of positioning and the habits displayed by the officials, right? If our fundamentals are strong and our habits are strong, we are going to be in the right place, right time, looking at the right things. We are going to properly adjudicate plays based on a system of mechanics, a priority of whose call is it, etc. Are we working the system? It's all based on our fundamentals and habits. Okay, so that's what we're looking at today. And then stick around. We have a bonus play at the end, a correctable error play. That's always interesting, you know, when correctable error plays jump up and bite us. Um, it puts a lot of pressure on the crew for various reasons. Let's get started today and look at our very first video. All right, simple block charge, right? Very straightforward. We have these calls in our game, but we want to look again at the fundamentals of the official, right? So um, we have this play submitted by the calling official. What are the things that we're looking at? And we can start and, and go back to the original play and start there. So positioning here, right? Our, our official is just off camera in a good position to officiate this play. This is not a play that we want, that, we, that this is a play that's going to catch us by surprise, right? Are we going to get beaten on this play? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is not a crime, right? We are officiating. Somebody has to officiate that play where the two players are competing for the ball. So we are beaten in this instance. This is a fundamental thing that happens to us as basketball officials. What are we going to do, Right. All we can do is do the best we can with what we've got, right? From this position, get an angle, get that defender. Right, so we have a combination. So we have a new mechanic this year. The punch is gone. So we have sort of a combination of the hand behind the head. I guess the correct mechanic now is to point and, so, and not to punch. This is a hybrid. That's all good. Let's look, though. We've got a little bit of the look back going on. Right, we're walking away. We don't necessarily have the number of the, offended, of the offending player. The look back, we designate the spot. Excellent. These are the things, right? These are the things, the habits that we want to build into our game. 
designate the spot, go to report, very confident demeanor. Now, this is a really simple play, right? This is an obvious charge. It's not really a question. So the question is, you know, are we going to bring out our tool bag? You know, we are we going to have the big block charge, you know, the big punch, or are we going to have just a basic straightforward, this is business as usual, easy peasy call. Our demeanor that we project, we may want to save our big emphatic, we're going the other way for a closer block charge play. Something that we want to have that variety as calling officials. We designate the spot. Looks like our, our administering official then recognizes that the calling official is, is attempting to stay uh, in the center position and says, okay, why don't we just take it to the other side, right? Obviously, we have some flexibility there. We want to, as the non-calling official, bump that official, right, and administer at the crop proper spot, but we're the only ones who know about mechanics, right? This is not a crime. And we resume there. So a simple block charge play. We're looking at fundamentals. Player needs, uh, the official needs to be there to officiate this play. And now they are even with the ball. Players are going the other way, right? Beaten, fact of life, own it, celebrate it, right? I was officiating the heck out of this play. We don't want to be running down court in anticipation of every possible play going in the other direction. Just accept the fact that we're going to get beat at times. Easy charge, right? This is one of the things about this. Uh, anytime we are officiating, I encourage officials not to give up their presence, right? Not to get hunched and bend over, etc. right? We project more confidence when we are tall and project that confidence, okay? So this is something I'd look at on this play, right? Maybe stop. We've got a fist up, hand behind the head, and point, but stay up as opposed to something like this, right? And again, these are the habits and fundamentals we want to look at and incorporate into our game. But I appreciate John submitting the play because that's how we get better. We analyze our game video. We look at the idiosyncrasies, the things we could do better, right? So on our initial play, the, the official could say, I had to make it, you have to make a decision here about, um, about how you're going to try to get the open look on the play. Am I gonna to try to outrun the play to the end line? Am I going to button hook and get straight in line? I have to find that angle, right? Has a good look here. Nothing but confidence about the call, right? And this is all good and fantastic. Once the call is made, Right. Once the fist up, we indicate, and then the immediate move is to the table to report. When we talk about our habits, right, habits, if we make our habit, my initial move is always towards the fowler. If, when, if I do that, is that going to slow me down? Is that going to make me more aware of players on the floor and the other players coming in? Right? So we have that initial contact between two players, and then we have players coming in. Teammates saying, great job, and picking their, picking their player off the floor. Sometimes non-teammates coming in, right? And we may need to uh, be aware of what's going to happen on the play. So our habit displayed here is, I've got the call, immediately start moving to the table. If we could change that and say, my habit is either to stay put, or take a step towards, then we're in better shape. All right, simple block charge play to get us started. Let's look at the next play that John submitted.
All right. So end of game scenario. We're coming out of a timeout. Again, we're going to look at habits of the calling official. Habits of the official. Fundamentals. All right. So let's take a look. This is coming out of a timeout, right? We want to be very clear about is this a designated spot throw in or does the official or does the player have the opportunity to move along the end line? We want to make that clear to the player who we are uh, administering the ball to. We also want to make it obvious to everybody. Everybody knows, right? We want it to show up on video, etc. Right? So this is a moment where we're going to do big, obvious motions, right? In our last in our last play and when we had the uh, the players on the court in our last episode, right? The, the the official administering the throw in, very emphatic. This is a designated spot throw in, right? Everybody knows. So we have sort of a intimate moment between the official and the player who's going to be the thrower in. But and, he, and there is a signal, but we could be better there. We could be more emphatic, more obvious with that. I'm going to put this up here. We'll go there. <sighs> okay, let's move. Sounds a whistle, I'm sure. Right? Personally, I'd recommend don't put the hand up until the ball has become live. Let's also remember why our hand is up. Our hand is up to signal to the timer by dropping the arm. Make that drop of the arm an actual signal to the timer and not just an uh, afterthought. Right? Could be a little more emphatic. Also look at the position of the official. In this instance, we are on the court. Right, a great spot here would be to be at, actually at the top side of the letter A, right? We want to be away from the thrower because remember, what do we have to be aware of? We have to be aware of the thrower's uh, feet, whether they step onto the court. We need to be aware of the defensive player, both their hands and their feet, et cetera. And we're going to gain that by being further away from the play. These are just the basics and the fundamentals. The distance away by the official here is good. If they stepped back towards the backside of the letter A, then they would have a better angle on the court. As of right here, right, we see that the official is looking uh, you know, directly across the court, not at what's happening, going to come next. We want to be aware of what's going to come next in addition. So if we look through the play, like if we look at, you know, here at the backside, let, let's say you were standing in the doorway, you could see through the players, right? And you could also see what's going to happen next. So habitually, we'd want to be off the court, trailing the play, have an angle on the throw-in. Right, these are areas we could improve here. Right, it's a, it's a fouling situation. This has been a point of emphasis and it will continue to be a point of emphasis, intentional fouls in an end of game situation. It is a fouling situation. We anticipate the team will take a foul. The coach may say, take a foul, take a foul, right? We all know what's going to happen next, but the players have to execute properly. The players have to fulfill their role of doing the right things in taking that foul. There has to be a play on the ball. There can't be two hands in the back causing a player to lose their balance, right? This is an intentional foul. Calling official comes correct. He's got the intentional foul. Again, we're looking at the signal, right? When you have it here, uh, I know, I know the mechanics manual says, you know, says one thing, but again, we're giving up our posture. We're hunched over, right, etc. Maybe we have a chance to do something with a better projection. Uh, moves towards the fowler, right? And we notice that the, the fowler then goes to the player who was pushed. Two players, right? Great sportsmanship. Fantastic. But we want to be on the scene 
to evaluate the fact that it was great sportsmanship. And anytime we have great sportsmanship on the court, tell the players, I really appreciate that. Thank you, right? This is good stuff. I reward you with a compliment and, uh, you know, when you display that. So we're going to go intentional foul the other way. The offended player will attempt two free throws, and then we, w- we will resume the throw in nearest the spot of the foul. Did we designate the spot of the foul um, for the, the, what's going to happen next, right? These are the things that we'd want to do. So before, you know, we don't see the aftermath of the play, but before we're, we're going to go to a partner and say, I have intentional, we're going to shoot two with a lane cleared, and then we'll come back, sideline throw in, end line throw in, et cetera. Who's going to administer the throw in? All of these things we want to know in advance. Straight up, great job on this play, obvious foul, obvious intentional Great job on the call. Here's the thing. If we do all of the things, like at the spot, right, we have that intentional. And instead of talking to the other, to the uh, teammate who comes in and says, oh, come on, ref, come on. He was making a play for the ball or whatever. Instead of doing that, we engage our partners, right? Hey, partner, I have intentional. That player is going to shoot two. We'll come back in on the sideline, end line. We take care of all that business then, you know, we're better off, John submitted. So those are two basic fundamental plays. Where what are we doing? We're looking at the calling official, habits and fundamentals, habits and fundamentals, right? These are going to jump off on every single play we adjudicate. Every time we, re- we move from one end of the court to the other, we're going to be, you know, displaying what we have. Right. What are right now where I am as an official? These are the fundamentals and habits that I display or I don't display. Right. My fundamentals on positioning are great, fair, good, fair or poor. Right. It's it's simple. It's as simple as that. It either, you know, the results are the results. I was out of position. I was looking at the wrong thing and I missed the call right? There's obviously room for improvement. But again, the habits as well, the way that we um, handle the spot of the foul, the way that we move to the reporting area, the way that we report, the way that we then communicate with our partners and the other, you know, have a conversation with a coach, maybe explaining a call, etc. All of these habits are on display and this is what we're looking at. So, John, thank you for those two clips. Let's look at the third clip John submitted. All right, fantastic. This is a great clip for all of the officials on the crew and things that we can look at when we're analyzing our game video. It's rich, right? Simple scenarios like this are rich with demeanor of the officials, fundamentals and habits. First of all, let's take a look at the lead official and the habits that they display. They are displaying habits on this play. What are the habits that they are displaying? The ball is moving. The players are moving. The official is static, right? We need to reflect who we are officiating and how we are officiating them and get the best possible angle, not 
just say, okay, I'm going to go to lead. This is where I officiate from lead, and I'm going to officiate the game from here, and I'm going to look here and look here, right? We need to move to improve, right? Habits, habits. Okay, so we have a double whistle on a rebounding scenario. So we got white 11 and red 21, positioning for a rebound. Players are going to compete for the ball. I think these are probably the two best players for either team. They're going to compete for the basketball. We want to allow players to compete for the basketball. We want to call obvious fouls. Okay. Of these two players, one jumps more vertically than the other, right? But they are both relatively vertical and there is no displacement on the play. Players end up tied up. The lead official on the end line has an open hand and immediately comes with a held ball signal. Okay. Previously, a couple of years ago, the proper mechanic was no hand and to just go to immediately to the signal. But now we've got the hand, but we also need to recognize always when we have a double whistle. That's why the change was made to go to the open hand, giving the officials a chance to process, etc. So we always need to be aware and recognize when we have a double whistle on a play. All right. So in my judgment, the, our calling official has got this play wrong. But what are the habits? What are the positives? The demeanor of the calling official is, it's a foul. We're going the other way. We're shooting bonus, right? Great demeanor. We see how the posture conveys that, right? We have a situation, though, where the crew chief on the, on the game says, wait a minute, I recognize we have a double whistle. I want these two officials to get together and sort that out and see which happened first. And it's a great job of doing that. Say, oh, ho, oh, ho, all right. And then he immediately backs away, right? So we have better perspective on the players. Is this a fantastic habit? You better believe it is. This is awesome. Awesome. You want to have that awareness. I'm aware my crew has a double whistle. I want to do what's best for the game. I want them to get together and sort this out, see which happened first, et cetera, so that we can, so we can improve our game and get going. There's great habits displayed here as a, you know, as the non-calling official on the play and crew chief behavior, right? These are the things that we want. We have the adjudication. This official says we're going to do this. And then he immediately turns around and goes for the basketball. Bad habit, right? We're eschewing the basketball. The ball will get to where it needs to go to. So we're great demeanor, great reporting. Go to where you need to go next. Don't turn around for the basketball, right? Habits, fundamentals. The official chooses to go opposite. I don't know in this state, wherever this was, whether that's the common practice, but the official chooses to go opposite. That's fine. Positives, great demeanor, obvious what the official has. The officials get together, right? We're going to sort it out. No, I have the foul first before the held ball. Okay, perfect. I mean, it is what it is. Crew chief gave the officials an opportunity to potentially get the call right, but that's what they ended up with, etc. So we are going to put calls in the game that are inaccurate. We do the best that we can, right? This is a fundamental, but sometimes we make bad calls, but we can help with the game by projecting strength and confidence even in those moments, right? And we have that on this play. So we have habits by the lead official, habits displayed by the center official, habits displayed by the trail official positives, negatives, things we could improve, etc. things that are fantastic. And we have to also celebrate. We watch our game video and say, oh, I made this mistake. 
I made this mistake. I made this mistake. I made this mistake. Man, I suck, right? No, no, no. I could have done better here. I did a really good job here. I did a really good job here. That's something I need to improve on, right? I keep making the same mistake, have to refocus, et cetera, et cetera. We have to celebrate our victories, right? I got the call correct. I was in the right position. I was looking at the right things. Those habits and fundamentals are really solid. When I report, maybe I need to do this thing or that thing or the other thing, and I need, still need to improve in that area. But we have to celebrate our victories, man. We can't be just like, I did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. That's my takeaway from watching the video, right? We're getting better. We're getting better. These are the plays that we want in our game. We want those two players competing for the basketball and displaying their athleticism, right? We don't want to officiate that out of the game. We want to call in this situation, we want to call the obvious, the obvious where 11 knocks the other player out and then gets the basketball. That's an obvious displacement foul, right? Anything super subtle here, patience, patience. So I appreciate those plays being submitted. If you want to submit a play or multiple plays for analysis, you can follow the link here, abetterofficial.com slash submit plays, and maybe your plays will appear on an episode of Five Play Friday. All right, fantastic. Let's look now at our next video. Pretty straightforward. This is a delay of game warning situation. We see this from players. Their team has scored a goal. They pick up the basketball and throw it to the official, right? Preventing the team from collecting the ball and putting the ball in. We want to be really aware when these situations occur in our game. Sometimes they occur with a team that is pressing and they are, you know, they are, uh, they want to slow down the administration of the throw in. Sometimes players just out of habit, out of habit, make that uh, decision. Like they want to make the game better. Here's the ball. Hey, ref, here you go. I know you're going to administer the throw in, right? But this is a situation that leads to a delay of game, and a delay of game warning, rather. And again, what do we want to do? How do we want to handle delay of game warnings? It's kabuki theater. We have to go through a process so that everybody knows, including grandma, 14th row. Come on. Can't hear so well. Can't see so well. But she knows, oh, that's a delay of game warning. Grandma's pretty switched on. <laughs> But we need to inform the book, delay of game warning on white, white coach, coach. That's a delay of game warning on your team. So their partners know partner, delay of game warning, right? Everybody knows. So that when something else that would rise to the level of a delay of game warning occurs later in the game, we would have a team technical foul by rule. Now, we were looking at habits of the calling official in the previous, or the officials in the previous clips, what do we have habit-wise on this play, right? This is the, this shooter is the responsibility of the trail. Make sure they land properly before then turning to the action, right? So the calling it, the, the, the official responsible for the coverage on the play stays with the shooter up, down, sees the landing, sees the possible tangling of feet, right? And then turns to the action. In addition, afterward, after the shot, habitually stepping down for rebounding and not disengaging, not anticipating, well, the, the other team's probably going to get the ball and we're going to be going the other direction. Simple habits that you want to verify. Yes, I displayed the habit displayed the habit, yes, these are all good things, etc. right? We talk about posture, great posture by the trail official here as well. The lead official, 
has good, good position for a ball that's in the corner. They're not too tight. We don't want to see an official on the T on the end line here or the S maybe a little bit further outside. A lot of times we see lead officials who are too close to the lane area when the ball is wide. Right. The other thing that we can often see from uh, officials is after they score the goal, they look at the table, right, and not officiate players and see what's going to happen next. You know, you'll see sometimes officials turn around, they'll, they'll, they'll score the goal and they'll turn around to the scorer and make eye contact. It's not necessary in the game. Let's watch our center official. Ball goes in the basket. Following the players, maybe uh, left a little bit early. You know, our first reaction as center official, the ball goes in the basket, is stay put. Read the players, etc. These are the kind of things we're doing. It stays open to the floor, though, by mirroring the signal. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, simple delay yeah, of game so warning. The, the, the official has the opportunity in this instance to just bat the ball to the, to the, to the player. Has the game been appreciable, appreciably delayed in this instance? No. Is the team gaining an advantage by making this inadvertent habitual movement of throwing it to the official? No. Were they pressing? No. None of these things. But, you know, this is a playoff game. You get into those scenarios and you are just like, everything's got to be just by the book. We don't want to do anything, you know, we want to dot I's and cross T's. So, okay, let's take a look at another video. All right. So, what are the key components of this clip? We have to be aware of the game situation, right? So clearly, we'd be coming out of a timeout here. What is our game situation? Our visitors here are down by a point with 0.4 seconds remaining. They are, have a, an end line throw in and they can move. We have to anticipate this play, right? These plays are much more, much more popular and the team is basically out of options. Their only option on this play is to throw a length of the full court pass. The ball is either tipped or quickly released. You know, we do have the ability to catch and shoot with .4 but the team is really in an absolutely tough position. The chances, statistically, of them being able to get a shot off are extremely small. So coaches now say, well, what can we do, right? We can create a situation where a defender, right, runs over our player, we're in the bonus, we get free throws, we win the game, right? So anticipation on this play and being aware is the most important thing, okay? So what do we so we need to know all of the things. We have a screening play. Are we screening a stationary opponent or a moving opponent? If we are screening a stationary opponent, all we have to do is shut, stop short of contact. If we are officiating screening a moving opponent, we have to give them time and distance. That's our first thing that we do, need to judge on this play. And then, of course, we need to judge the legality of the defender. Notice that left foot steps out of bounds. That player is in an illegal screening position by rule at the high school level. I would assume it's the same at the collegiate level. I do not know. But these are all of the things that we need on this play. Notice the official has students behind them, got fans behind them. They're like in a tight spot. It 
designed play, have to be ready for these plays in this situation, right? So key component here is we are coming out of a timeout, right? We are coming out of a timeout in this situation. This is going to be a game deciding play potentially. We want to know all of the things, all of the things. We need to know, is the clock correct? We need to know, is there anything we need to be aware of clockwise? If we were at point three, we would obviously communicate to our through, cannot cap and catch and shoot, et cetera, et cetera. But we're at point four, so they can catch and shoot. We're aware of that. How many timeouts does this team have? How many timeouts does this team have? What is our team foul situation? What do we expect to have happen? We try to anticipate plays and be in position for plays. We want to, uh, you know, sometimes if teams have timeouts available, they will come out onto the court. The ball gets made live. They choose to take a timeout. Or before the ball gets made live, they choose to take another timeout. They wanted to see what the defense was or the defense wanted to see what the offense was. We want to be aware of those situations. But we want to be aware of all of the things, right? And now that these plays are more prevalent, we can then say, hey, let's look out for this. They may try to do this. Or they may run a player out of bounds and then throw the ball to them out of bounds or something like that. Let's be aware of all the trickery that a team may resort to in this situation. All right, let's take a look now at a bonus play. Correctable error scenario. The original call, it's truncated at the video, but we have a blocking foul in line throw in. Bonus free throws should have been awarded in this instance. The game resumes, the game continues, and then uh, the lead official ultimately says, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was, should have been bonus free throws. Gets the crew together and they administer the bonus free throws. Correctable error scenarios, they're going to happen in our game, like it or not, they're going to happen in our game. We need to know how to adjudicate properly, and we need to know fundamentals about status so that we can make those determinations, okay? So in this instance, let's go back. To here. Merited free throws should have been awarded and were not awarded. The ball was made live. And the game continued, right? So we need to know what our correctable error time frame is. The ball becomes live. Clock properly starts. The ball becomes dead. That is our window of opportunity to correct a play like this. Right? Simple. We've covered that in correctable errors. I'll put a link above to the entire playlist covering correctable errors. So we need to be aware of status. When is the ball live? When is the ball dead? When the ball is scored, when a goal is scored, the ball has become 
dead by rule. And it's scored again, become dead by rule. And then the official recognizes, hey, we have a correctable error situation. Let's talk about it. And the crew gets together. And that's all well and good. And now we have to do something, in, you know, as a crew, we have to piece together what has happened in the game. This is hard. This is a hard thing to do. Like the, the, the play could have gone up and down with no baskets for a couple of minutes. It's always possible. So, but what do we know? Well, I know the goal, we just scored a goal, right? And I know that they just, we could start to take those things and say, hey, if a goal is scored, the ball becomes dead, right? We know status. And so we can make the crop proper adjudication on the play. Okay. So the crew makes a mistake here, awards the merited free throws after the correctable error time frame, And of course, that's what we have to determine as officials is, is it a correctable error? Has, is the correctable error time frame? is it still allowable to correct? And then we can correct. If it's not a correctable error, and if it's not within the, or if it is a correctable and not within the time frame, we cannot correct by rule. Okay, so what are we doing today? We're looking at habits, okay? Let's do that. Let's look at the habits of the of the crew, right? So we have a blocking foul and an end line throw in, right? Good, blocking, end line, strength is good. I guess we're wiping a basket. When the official's moving to the reporting area, would we describe this movement as purposeful? Right? We're reading the body language of the calling official. Are they projecting certainty and strength? Or are they opening a window to, you don't believe in that call, you know that's a bad call, et cetera, et cetera, right? We want, when we make the move, when we ultimately make the move to report, we want to have strength with our reporting. Good, good. At the reporting, we're strong. Bring players in. A great, uh, a great, great habits and signals here. Listening to an offended coach, probably saying that should have counted or he was shooting, etc. Pulls up. Excellent, excellent. The button hook to get an angle on the play. Got some high-level players in this game. I know one of them is in the NBA now. Dang. <laughs> right? And now our official says, hey, wait a minute. We should have shot bonus free throws. We don't know the temperature of the game. We don't know the temperature of the game, whether it, there was, you know, it seems like we might be towards an end of game scenario just by the way that the game is being played. Um, not necessarily competitive, but we are all three officials get together, leaving players unattended. Is that a habit that we want to bring onto the court in our game? Like if we're going to have a super brief conversation, but if we're going to have an extended conversation, we've got to take the variable of players on the court out and move them to their benches. Okay. We noticed in the in the first clip or one of the first clips, crew chief says, hey, you two need to get together and then backs away, right? It's a way of not interrupting the flow of the game, allowing the proper communication to happen, etc. So when we display a situation where three officials are huddled together facing each other and nobody's watching the players, this is not a good habit. This is something that nine times out of 10, nothing. Nine times out of 10, we get away with it, but it's not a good habit in the long run. If we review the play, we could say, okay, when was the window closed, right? The mistake has been made, the ball becomes live. When does our window close? The ball is still live. The ball is still live. The ball is dead by rule, okay? When does the ball become live on the resulting free throw? When the ball is at the disposal of the thrower and in high school, when the official begins their count, of course, habits. So you are the official. There is a throw in after a made basket. Do you 
habitually begin a count, even when it's almost an instantaneous throw-in? Do you habitually uh, have that count? You could pick nits about the situation here, but this ball has become live. I mean, it's certainly live at this point. So our window has definitely closed. And also in a correctable error situation, we want to say, okay, window opens, clock runs, ball becomes dead. When does the ball become live again? Right? Having a complete understanding of that uh, sequence is critical. Again, there's a link above to the entire correctable error playlist if you need work in that area. Thank you for joining us today for Five Play Friday. I hope that there's been some value gained about looking at game video and finding habits and fundamentals. It's the critical component of what we do when we analyze our game video. If this is the content that you find valuable, now would be a great time to do all the things you know the things. Like, subscribe, and notify so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Allow me a moment to thank our fantastic show supporters, Jeet Gulati, Jose Lansong Jr., Brian Maki, Tyler Matlock, Thomas Hennian. Much appreciated and much love. You want to support the show? You can always buy us a coffee. You can head to a betterfisher.com slash coffee. You know, I'll put a link above and in the show notes below. Fantastic. We have additional video content for you here. I've made a selection up here. YouTube's made a selection down here. You make your selection. Choose wisely. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.